You have entered the Chronics rabbit hole. Chronic is Nightwish Army. Welcome back to another reaction. We are doing an interview with Tuomas Halepainen about human nature. This interview was done in 2021 from Rock Bottom. Welcome back to the channel, Nightwish Army. If this is your first time here, though, welcome in. I hope you stay. We are doing this interview for a few things. I always love finding out more about Tuomas, anyone from Nightwish, but also now that we're doing our own interviews on the channel, I like to kind of study how people interview some of the people I want to interview so I can see what questions they like and dislike, as well as just seeing other types of questions that I wouldn't think myself. Human Nature is an album that we are doing song by song reactions to, which has been a long time coming. So this week, get excited, y'all. We're going to be getting back to the Human Nature album. We have more time in August. We have a way to have babysitting better and just more time um, so that we can get in front of the camera for y'all. And without further ado, let's get into this interview from Rock Bottom. Which one is that? Please let me know. I don't think I've heard this one from Human Nature yet. In the interview with Rock Bottom, radio show and YouTube channel, yeah, Thomas Olopainen, is it pronounced rightly? Very close. Yeah, fantastic. Well uh, keyboardist, mm -hmm. main songwriter yeah, of Legendary, and extremely successful band Nightwish. Hi, Thomas, we will talk about your new double album, Hello. Human Nature, hi. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Human Nature is your first album since 2015. So why did it take five years to be released? There were things. First of all, after finishing the previous album, I, as a songwriter, but also the other members in the band, strongly felt that it's time for a little breather. We had been going on for nearly 20 years without taking any time off. Wow, that's, and that's fair And with uh, creating art, you don't want to do any compromise. We could have gone straight to the studio, start doing a new album, but it would have been crap because none of us felt like doing a new album. So Didn't that's why we decided to take the first sabbatical so to say ever and after that we did this nostalgia tour called decades where we mainly played the older songs mm -hmm. from the late 90s early 2000 and um, oh wow that's really cool so they took their sabbatical and then they did the decades tour at buenos aires i believe and that is awesome because we went through that concert song by song as well we also did an album with this other I don't know if you can call it the project band called Ari. Um, and uh, shout out to Ari. After finishing that Maybe album, Atlanta. it kind of Troy. opened some floodgates, and I became really, really interested in doing another Nightwish album. But as before, it takes at least a year, year and a half to finish a new album. So here we are in 2020, finally, with a new album. Yes, but I don't think five years is like that long if no, you think about it. You just need to take crazy. your time, what it takes to create something. Of course, and the re result is marvelous. I heard it before this interview. It's a great album and it's a double album. The first mm -hmm. CD contains songs with vocals, yeah, Nightwish style as we know, Nightwish. Of course, and the second CD contains a long, mainly a long and mainly instrumental track. So, could you explain this musical one. approach? The original idea was not to do a double album. We thought we can fit all the material on one album, but since a CD only takes about 70, 80 minutes of material, and the album is 83 minutes long or something like that, we had to split it just a little two discs. over which ended up being a brilliant decision because now it even makes more sense when you think about the mm -hmm. thematics of the album. It's human nature, human dot, nature dot. Yes. And the first nine songs are all about humans telling stories about humanity, human nature, about other humans with a human voice. And then after that, you flip the disc and go into the nature for half an hour for some 
instrumental escapism. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. No wonder you guys have been pressing us to get back to that. The way he's explaining it. I like how Rock Bottom is, well, the channel Rock Bottom here, it sounds like they're a radio show as well. How they're asking these um, questions. Um, Tuamas looks like he's enjoying it as well. And he's so kind and generous. And he's very intentive when this guy is talking. And that's also something else I like to look is to see, like, what grabs um these people's attention so much and Tuamas just loves talking about music. So that's the nature part of the album. And yeah, if you see the first CD, is there a lyrical meaning behind this album? Is it meant as a concept? And I, I kind of like this angle that you can see him just a little bit in the reflection when he's talking, and then you got like the back of Tuamas's head. So like he's there, but he's not taking the screen up because most people are here for him over i guess rock bottom even though a lot of rock bottom people are going to be here too probably a, a a lot of them so percentage wise probably more rock bottom people are watching this interview than nightwish in total but anyways i think that's brilliant it's a way to get you in without overtaking it album or how would you see it i wouldn't use the term concept album but there is a loose theme that's running through all the songs so in a way it is thematic album but it was not intended no intended. at some point during the songwriting process i realized that uh, the word human appears in all the songs <laughs> and these are all somehow connected and then i kind of nice. realized that okay this song is about the power of human imagination this song is about the power of human empathy this song is all about music uh, descending on mankind this song is about human versus technology so okay let's call this album human but that doesn't sound quite right so the last song it's all about the beauty of planet earth yeah. the last song is kind of like nightwish's love letter to planet earth so that's nature human nature wow, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's how we came up with the title wow and y'all are saying that there was a fan-made video for that second part of the human nature album that we have to make sure we watch when we're reacting to that of the Album. Okay, and um, there's uh, the second CD, it's a uh, string orchestra included, I guess it's a uh, It's actually session. the whole, whole orchestra. That's the only song on the album that we use the whole orchestra from London. Ah, oh, yes. And on the first nine songs, we only use the string section and choir. Oh, yeah, I heard it, and um, how hard was it to bring in this um, yeah, London Session Orchestra? Did you um, conduct this orchestra or did it somebody else? Because how hard was it to bring this orchestra to your music? Normally they do other kinds of music, mm, I guess. Well, we have been working with these same people since 2003. Mm -hmm. So it's 17 years already. We have done many albums with them, so we know the people. and. Uh, the man who did the orchestrations, Pip Williams, has worked with us for the last four or five albums. I can't count. <laughs> but yeah, so we know each other really well. The musicians and the choir, they know Nightwish's style. So it was a really easy process. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say, it's like, come on, guy. This, they have been together forever. We have seen so many of the documentaries where it shows their connection that they've had since 2003, which now it's like two decades that they've had together, which is insane. If y'all want us, Enter the Chronic, to reach out to Tuomas to do an interview on Storytime, please let us know. Okay, okay. And yeah, Florianzen is your third female singer. So do you have to create a different kind of songwriting for Flor? because she's got a different voice yeah, than Taya or Annette. How would you see it? Is it the difference for you? I do hear her voice in my head when I'm composing the song. Same thing with the previous vocalist. Of course, I always try to um, tailor and make the songs nature. for certain singers to sing. That's only natural. So when I was doing the vocal melodies and writing the lyrics, I constantly had her voice in my head. Mm -hmm. So yes, and especially on this album, we took full advantage of all three vocalists' abilities. I think this is the most singing-orientated album that we have done. There's a lot of storytelling, there's a lot of vocal acrobatics going on. 
Ah oh, yes, I heard it and the other main songwriter of Nightwish, so how far goes the influence of the other band members yeah, in songwriting and production? Do they have their own identity? Can they bring in their own ideas? Oh, absolutely. Own... Yeah, and it, you can easily... I think that's a good question because a lot of the times, at least what I've seen with some comments, is that Tuomas doesn't let um, the band members have freedom to express their own thoughts with the song. And I'm glad that he asked that question and Tuomas is always so kind with his answers. Here. Bring in their own ideas. Oh, absolutely. Album. Yeah, and it, you can easily hear it from the albums. And it's really important for me as a songwriter already during the songwriting process to leave some space for everybody so that they can bring in their own personality. Yeah, and I'm yeah because That's what playing in a band is all about. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I thought because some songwriters have had strict ideas and no other ideas they accept, but in your case it's a little bit different. I, I do have a pretty clear overall vision of all the songs, even before I present the song to the rest of the band. Mm -hmm. But I'm also very open-minded and I, like I said, I leave deliberately some space for them mm -hmm. to play in. And how long did it take to write all... Well, that's the thing, like, if there's too many cooks in the kitchen, you're not going to get the best meal. Like, um, you need to have someone that's highly dominating, like, 80% of it, and then 20% will come from the rest for the finishing touch. And I think that's why Nightwish has always lasted so much, because it's Tuomas' genius that's getting then these singers are using his lyrics and then having space to have a little improv on the way that they want it to sound as well so they can mesh together. But like you say, he has most of the songs already thought out when he presents them to them. So I also can see why it's important for these other artists to have then say their own um, side projects or whatever, solo careers, when they can express some of their own song creating and stuff. But I am. I think that's still a very good question to ask, and there you go. These tunes, um, did you, are you frequently counting your ideas, and are you frequently working on new music, or did you do it after the last tour, or so how is your working process? I started to brainstorming over the ideas and the stories, gathering ideas here and there, in the beginning of 2018, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. and uh, that was during the previous tour the Nostalgia tour that we did. So after that tour, I did nothing but write the songs hmm. at home, alone <laughs> in my own piece. That's something that I need for about five months. So overall, getting the songs together took about a year and a half. And then the first demo recording took about two weeks. Then uh, rehearsing, arranging the songs with the band took about five weeks. And then the rest of the year we spent in mixing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Tuomas has the best life, y'all. He gets to travel around the world when he's performing his music. He has a lovely wife, but then he gets to go home to his original hometown with that home and, like, literally gets to make his music in peace and have, like, his cake and eat it, too, like Alana and I say. And that's, like, in a nice way. He, he gets to stay with that nostalgic feeling of being in your hometown while still being able to fly like a bird and go all around the world and that's why he can he really is like the perfect mix of that that innocence mixed with professionalism and that's what being born again means y'all like it's you got to become a master at something you apprentice for a while then once you become that master you get a little hardened and then you have to become like a child again to have that creativity and that flow to then make sure you're still having fun while being a master at something and i think he always had that right off the bat and his influences um because he's he's been into uh, like film score like film scores that are really in um he's big on that he loves disney he loves video games like he loves music in every single area so it's actually really cool to find out a little bit more of the human nature as we're going to get right back into it to know how all these songs weren't meant to all be together like uh like um a concept album but how it all turned into that that's amazing 
Das, ja, ähm, about that. And what's about the, um, how should I say, the artistical concept, or the, the, how should I say, the layout, the cover design, and did you create it by yourself? Could you explain the, how should I say, the line, uh, up, uh, line layout of the CD? Mm. We used the same guy who's been working with us since 2006. He's uh, called Janne Pitkanen, also known as Toxic Angel. And we started with the artwork already back in 2018. So also the artwork has been in, in the making for more than a year and a half. Oh, wow. Each song will have its own artwork once again. Yeah. And uh, it's quite the massive amount of work that went into that as well. But it's quite stunning and we're really pleased with the result. And it was actually his idea to do the cover as it is. Mm -hmm. We had the title Human Nature, but we're a bit lost what to do with the actual cover. And it was his idea that how about we find out which are the oldest known symbols for those two words. Mm -hmm. And then we contacted an archaeologist who's Troy's friend called David Roll, and uh, he did some research and sent those symbols Troy. to us. And we thought immediately this is perfect. Mm. An album called Human Nature, and on the cover you can see the old cuneiform symbols of the words human and nature. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, that's, that's incredible. Christmas. Just a lover of history and mythology and science and nature. He's, geez, this guy is so brilliant. Uh, what I was searching for, yes, and. Um, how will you realize this album live? Um, which visual effects are planned? Do you have uh, do you have an idea in your mind? How will you realize it with um, background? Um, We're working on it. I just had a discussion with the production designer this morning <laughs> because we're starting the band rehearsals in about a month and he's doing new screen material as we speak. So the same old, same old, in that sense that we're going to have the big screens, some pyros, and somehow bring the thematics of this album to the yes. live show as well. Yeah. Mostly with screens. Oh ah, yeah, with, with mm. screens. And we will definitely be going through Dice Brand as well, that concert song by song, and I know they have some songs from this album, so we can see how they brought it to life at a festival at least. So, yeah. Okay, and um, the tour starts in China, so that's unusual, I guess. So what was? It was that? supposed to start in China, but due to the due to the coronavirus, we had to postpone it to October. Ah yes. We just heard about this two days ago. Uh, the local promoter told us that it's impossible to go there now. Completely understandable. But the shows will happen in uh, late October, most likely. Yes, okay, and um, we, we, I don't know if those shows happened. Is China open for your music? Uh, once yeah. I had an interview with Biff Byford of Sex and I asked him about China. He said, we are ready for China, but China isn't ready for us. So how is the <laughs> situation in China? I heard it's really good. Uh, nice. I think all of these shows that we were supposed to do in April were more or less sold out. So there's definitely something <laughs> going yes. under. This is the third tour that we're going to do there and the previous two were really good. So uh, yeah. it really nice. is a growing market and there's a lot of space to be conquered there. I actually didn't know they've been to China doing that. I know they went to Japan, so that's good to know they're accepted there as well. A lot yeah, of people great. are. Mm -hmm. And if you see your current line up with Flo Janssen, how is she accepted by your fans compared to Taya and Annette? Is there a difference in the perception of the fans or is it for you always the same? How would you see it? Because some fans, they ask for the original singer and you know, the, all these conditions. Yeah, no, uh, it's a never ending discussion. <laughs> But Floor has been taken in really, really well because she's been in... So like, and for me, so as I was mentioning at the beginning, I looked to see what questions I wouldn't ask and what questions I would ask. This is a question, seeing how he's reacting to that, this is a never-ending discussion. For me, is like, hey, I've heard this a lot. Maybe I don't really want to talk about it. I'm still going to be awesome for you and give you an honest and great answer. But 
Um, that's kind of what I'm looking for, and that's at least how I interpret it. Maybe he loves this question, and I don't know what I'm talking about, but that's kind of why it's nice to watch all these interactions with everyone, because when you have this dialogue with people, people would just randomly open up and say some of the most secrets that they think they're being listened to, so, I mean, that's, uh... That's kind of why I love interviews and just talking to people in general because you really get to find out more than just the what they are working wise because obviously he loves music and that is his life but he has so many other things I would ask about like his love for video games obviously where does he go for his um, holidays stuff like that right all right this business as long as Nitrous has existed since the late nineties so people all already knew her. Mm -hmm before she joined the band and now yeah. that she's been a full member of the band for the past seven years she's won all the hearts over okay yeah you. so yeah. just brilliant stuff everyone's had that forecast yes and um yeah you have engaged roy jansen and troy donaglay in 2013 yes kai hardro joined the band in 2015 as a drummer so it's a, call it not new, but it's a different lineup than in the beginning. So, um, yeah, how is the human climate in the current lineup? Is it a good and well climate? How would you see it? At the moment, it's really good. It's a marriage between six people. So, how harmonic can it ever be? Yeah. But at the moment, it's really good. And we have had our fair share of lineup changes in the past. But then again, in a rock band what during band 24, 24 years of existence, four lineup changes is pretty average. So yeah. I think we're doing okay it's in good. that sense. But to answer your question, uh, things are really good. At it's the good. It's a good yeah. Yeah, lineup. Okay. Yes. It's yes. Yeah, very good. And if you see yet uh, now, um, yeah, when you started lineup, which bands did you inspire? When you started Nightwish for your own music, for your own yeah, artistical identity, and do you hear a Nightwish influence in the music of other bands today? My own musical heroes come from the film music genre. Yeah, so the film music genre. And um, Petra told me about um, someone that he's really into, and I'm going to quickly bring that up because that person's worth mentioning with all the amazing film scores that he's been a part of. And it's Hans Zimmer. And maybe he's going to talk about Hans Zimmer, but this person has done so much um, scores. Like I'm pretty sure did even Lion King too or something like that. But um, I'm glad that he did mention that because then like you could talk about how his love for movies and imagine finding out what movies Tuomas loves and like if he's watching any Netflix shows right now. Like those are the type of questions I also want to ask. <laughs> so composers like Hans Zimmer, uh, Van Gelis, John Williams, mm -hmm. Ennio Morricone, James Newton Howard. He said uh, Hans Zimmer. That's good. Goes on First. forever. So that's where I draw most of the influence from. See, that's why I trust you, Nightwish Army. You're always giving me the correct information. You're ready to lay the line for the facts when I'm asking for it, and that's great. And having that pre-knowledge really does help, hopefully, when we do get a chance on this channel to interview these people. Um, maybe we'll make sure it's one of the best interviews they have. Not directly, but the thing is that whatever inspires you, whatever goes under your skin, it comes out when you create your own stuff and you're mm -hmm. influenced by the things that you like. It's mm -hmm. human nature. Yes, it's good. And because there are many bands who sound a little bit like Nightwish today, I guess. There are some bands, I don't know if, that is, if there's a direct connection maybe with Temptation, Delane and Epica in some kind. Yeah, we, we all sail in the same water, so to say, but I do think that all of the bands you mentioned have a very strong identity on their own. Yes, and well said. Everybody's Don't doing their own thing. In. But definitely this symphonic metal, 
possibly with a female vocalist. Uh, we were among the first ones, not yeah. the first one though. I mean, we had our influences as well. Bands like uh, the Third of the Mortal, Theater of Tragedy, mm. Therian, nice. mm-hmm. a few. So we didn't start the genre, but maybe we took it on a took took it to the down. next level. Yes, of course. And next level, we mentioned that the, um, yes, some great Finnish band, Therian, or other Swedish. They're Swedish. Swedish. Yeah, but um, Apocalyptica mm. and yeah, some great bands. So what is the reason for this creativity? What do you think? That's one of the big mysteries that I don't really have an answer. And we get asked that a lot. I why pass. do Scandinavia, why do Finland uh, produce so many metal acts? Yeah. <laughs> well, for me, and like, I, I'm going to try to answer that. Um, the culture of Finland, from what I have seen from all of these documentaries, is it's a really reserved and these men don't express their feelings and they kind of have to put all their emotions into their gut. So all those people having to suppress all that would then have all those words that need to be said still. So you're going to get a lot of amazing metal bands coming out of something read from that because you're still living by all these men that aren't expressing themselves if you're a daughter or a, um, a wife. So you're still going to get affected from what that is. And even maybe there's some really good Finnish and Scandinavian um, all-female bands as well, right? So, I mean, it's just, it is a hard question to to ask that. And also, you can think of all the history that they've had there is so rich. And they're so expressive as well as a community, I feel. Like, at least coming from Canada, they're... Like they kiss on the cheek, they're a lot more touchy and stuff too. So th- I feel like the dance and the play is a bit more there. So their their songs come out a bit more natural, I guess, and not so propaganda. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow uh, the personality of the metal genre and uh, the melancholy of all it, it somehow reflects to us as uh, northern citizens. Mm-hmm. There's some connection there that the way we are as a nation, the way we are as people in Scandinavia up north, there's uh, a big dark side in us. There's a lot of melancholy, but there's also a lot of twisted humor. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, there and is. All that can be End of innocence. heard in the music. Mm-hmm. Something like that, but I can't give you a single answer. No, no, but um, for example, Floor is from the Netherlands mm. and your pipe player comes from England, so it's no problem for them that are not, that are not from Finland. It's one unit and the different nationalities don't have any influence in your band activities. Or... No, there are... <laughs> bringing their effort into the band as individuals of course yeah yes, of where course. they come from doesn't really matter that's no. the right attitude music counts so do you have further uh, information for your fans for yeah, the new album or for the tour well like we already touched the topic we're not going to open in china so the first show will be in mexico city mm. and then it's going to be followed by a few shows in russia Ukraine, Belarus, and the festival season. So there's a lot, lot of opportunities to come and see us. Yeah, so that's good. Yes, thank you, Thomas. Yeah, for this nice interview. Have a good, have good success with a new album, with a tour, and yeah, all the best. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Wow. Oh, and he gets that nice shot too with him. That's great. What an honor to be able to interview Tuomas. That is one of my life goals right now. One day, possibly, I'm scared to send that request. I want to make sure I'm ready mentally to do it if he ever does say yes. But it's awesome to watch this interview because I think you could see the questions he liked and didn't like. I think it was a good line of questioning still, especially from someone who's just genuinely 
trying to find out about the band itself and maybe doesn't know the information of the background of the band as much as some of the diehard night which army i only know so much because you guys have shown so much and we've gone through all this together so that's where i feel like the interview would be all of us with all of our knowledge to be able to have an incredible interview with him but this is really cool because you got to see um fully how human nature came from existence and I think it's really cool that it never had the plan to be a concept album and then it became one and it makes me really excited to get back to it. I'm going to make sure Alana is going to be there for the human nature reactions. Um, now in August, we do have a lot more time to get back to that. So I'm very excited for that. I'm, I like the long term interview style the most. I think 20 minutes is, it just kind of gets you going and it, because like you could see towards the end that 20 minutes was uh, maybe a good amount of time for this interview because at the end he started you know covering his face a bit and was ready to wrap it up but if you're going and having a really good conversation when you get to about the 20 30 minute mark that's when things start sparking and you like you're in such a good gel as you know when you're hanging with people you got to give it some time to get the gears going again so um that's why it's really important to do your um studying before the actual interview so you have some real just base knowledge something i've always been told with an interview is you have to know three times as much information as the time slot allotted to you so if you have like an hour interview you're trying to do you better know three hours of information so that you can at least bounce between all that three hours in that one hour because things go a lot quicker um, then you usually expect, especially if say an answer doesn't land correctly and then they go really quick with the answer back and there's many ways that you can derail an interview. So that, again, this is why I love watching it. It's amazing. Um, I love the camera angle that he did where you could at least see him doing it because my eye always went to that reflection of, um, rock bottoms, um, interviewer there. And I think that's still cool that they actually have a. A radio show as well and i've always wanted to get um art interviews on like spotify and all that too so it definitely makes me remember to do that but if you guys have seen this interview or, or if this was your first time please let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this interview and if you want to see two wamas come on to our podcast as well i'm sure all the nightwish army would be excited for that I know they got a new album coming out and why not want to do some interviews with people that love him Hope you guys had a good time. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new. But we are exiting the rabbit hole now, folks. Peace and love. God bless y'all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Enter the Chronicness. Special thanks to all of our YouTube, Patreon, and Buy Me a Coffee members. Thank you for all of your support.